This video is going to show you how to draw an accurate drawing of the room you're sitting in using the vector program iDraw. We're going to be talking about pre-made objects, we're going to be talking about how to put accurate measurements in, different types of lines, and loads more. So let's get designing and drawing. Greetings, my name is The Adipose and welcome to my second iDraw tutorial. Feel free to pause the video as often as you need to and rewind, etc, um, etc, et but I strongly recommend that you draw along with me today to help you get the most out of what we're going to be doing. Head into the cog and turn on the, the button that says Show Grid. If it doesn't appear, make sure you've got it set to Canvas there rather than Preferences um, at the top. And you'll see that grid has now brought a load of boxes on, onto the screen. This is going to help us draw a very accurate drawing but we're not quite finished with the grid yet because we need to make sure that the grid is set up for our particular needs so I'm going to go into the units and rulers section and I'm going to change it to centimeters because I don't know about you but when I'm drawing uh, something particularly accurately it's not the pixels I'm interested in it's going to be the the, the size because today what we're going to be looking at is actually kind of a floor plan um, of of the room that you are sitting in so I've created centimeters then I'm going to go into canvas scale and actually I'm going to flick that on to meters and then I'm going to change it so that one centimeter on my drawing actually represents 0.25 um, meters and then I'm going to come back out to the main option screen I'm going to go into grid settings and I'm going to change it so that each individual box in the X and Y actually represents 0.1 um, meters and then rather than having six lines per kind of bigger square I'm actually only going to have five lines per big square now the reason for that is now the reason I've set that grid is it now means that every little box there uh, every small box represents um, 10 centimeters squared which means that th every big box actually represents half a meter squared and that's one meter along and that's one meter down so I've, I can now draw an, uh, a reasonably accurate looking um, um, grid on my on my particular sc on, on my screen but if you notice when I'm drawing these shapes out here using the square tool uh, they're still just appearing wherever um, I plonk them so what we need to do is go back into settings and go into where it says guides and snapping and turn on snap to grid and now you'll see that these shapes will only appear directly along one of those lines um, that we have put in. Now before we draw this shape let's just turn the transparency of the shape we're drawing down and let's just give it a tiny little bit of colour as well um, to make it um, stand out. Now I'm going to be drawing the room I am in which is approximately three and a half meters squared so um, you can actually see the distance as you draw it but follow along with me here we're going to go uh, half a meter, a meter meter and a half, two meters, three meters, three and a half meters and then down the same one meter, two meters, three meters, three and a half let go and I just didn't quite finish the one there so by using the technique in the last video I can edit that shape by grabbing the blue blobs and uh, moving it across and there's the outline of my room now let's learn something new here because I actually have a um, an, uh, an old kind of chimney in my room that actually comes in if I just grab a, another a square that actually comes in about here-ish um, which means that that bit of the room I can't actually use now something that um, a lot of pro a lot of pro a lot of vector, pro vector programs use is the ability to um, if I just click on this shape here it, the ability to modify shapes using other shapes and I'll show you how this one works we're gonna draw another shape that is the cutout in my room where the, where that where I have the chimney so I'm just gonna draw it along there and notice I've completely overlapped okay I haven't just drawn exactly where it is I've gone outside my original room design and then I'm gonna select both of the shapes that I have drawn like this by drawing a big box around both of them so both of them are selected now what this does this technique I'm going to show you is it always modifies the lower shape I which is normally going to be the shape you drew first depending on um, whether you copied or whether you drew it live but if we now go into the modify tab you'll see the whole bunch of different options here union subtract intersect exclude and divide now what we want to do is subtract because we want to take the second shape that I drew away from the first shape so let's just click that button and look back at our original design and we'll now see that it's cut that it the, the second shape I've drawn has completely disappeared but where it was before it has now um, 
left that hole and let's just line that back up with the grid there so you can see it so now it's just a case of starting to draw in um, some of the other shapes in my room again using the grid as a guide with a little bit of transparency so my computer desk um, is down here so this is this is where the magic happens um, which is on there it's probably a little bit thinner again I'm using the the tools here to just kind of move it across and then I my computer itself is kind of a big box around here so you, you can just go in and start kind of drawing the various objects that you've got but supposing we wanted to draw uh, a, a door now there's a couple of things we can do to, to do this um, we're just going to go into the line tool uh, and you can just draw out a single line like so and then we've got the curved line which I think we used in the in, in the last um, tutorial and so then I've got my door but you'll see that the curve has actually got the wrong the wrong way so as you might expect we select that curve tool and we we rotate it but we don't necessarily want it to be on any possible angle we want it to be an exact uh, kind of opposite angle to where it was so if we add a second finger you'll now see that it rotates more jerkily you're only going to do it in like 15 degree angles so I can get that exactly uh, where I want it now I can also by keeping that line um, selected and then going back into the uh, appearance options change it so that line isn't actually just a solid line it's a dashed line like so and you can now see it starts to look a lot more like a door if at any point of course you want to change the curve you do this like we did in the first tutorial using the uh, the the blue balls of the the node editor and to make this look even more like a door we're going to copy in a second line here to copy and paste I think we mentioned this one before but you just grab an object using the select you go up the top left hand side where you've got options like copy paste paste in place etc and we're going to just going to copy and then we're going to paste and it's going to appear here now if I move that around um, it's the grid is restricting where I can put it but in this particular case I want to break the grid so all you've got to do is go into to canvas preferences guides and snapping turn off snap to grid temporarily we'll move this into place and then go back in and turn that grid whoops and then turn that grid back on and we've now got a nice looking door in our grid but supposing we wanted to take this idea of dimensions a little bit further if I select the room again and then go up into appearance there's actually an option here called labels and I'm just going to move this to one side and you'll find out why in a, in a second uh, there's an option called labels here where we can actually put on um, a name so you could just put the word door or the word room or the word computer desk or whatever or it can actually come with some pre-made uh, ideas such as um, the length so if I um, just move this location around so you can see it where's it gone there we go there is our length you can see it in the in the in the number form there but now just in the offset we can put where it actually appears it doesn't have to be the length it could be the width it could be the height it could be the total area of course if it's the total area we're probably uh, then going to put it more in the middle of um, the room but you know, there's, there's loads of options but but this is a kind of pre-made um, dimension that you can actually set as a default to go into your uh, designs and it doesn't have to just be on ob on objects it could be on lines as well. Let me show you one of these. Suppose I wanted to put a measure line by the fireplace. Um, I just grab the line tool, and then I, before I click it, I actually add in. I change one of the options at the bottom left. You see, you've got I've got an arrow, a straight line, then one arrow, and then a double arrow. If I draw that in there like that, we can see that one actually pre-made comes with the length attached. But we can edit that. Um, if I go back into where the um, the label was. Uh, by default I think by default it actually just comes out like I think by default we've got a background color of transparent with no cornering so I think it will just look just look like that which, is, which looks great but if you want to take it further you just do the opposite you, you give it a background color so let's let's give it black and let's change the text color of that thing to white and then just by rounding the corners uh, you can actually get a pretty professional um, looking label and remember of course if you don't like the position of where it is you can adjust it using the uh, location um, for your particular 
schematic. Now the other nice thing about um, iDraw is it comes with some pre-made shape libraries and if you click this on the left hand side it looks a bit like it's just below the polygon tool it looks like a kind of cutout um, thing. I'm going to show where it is just because it appears in a weird place. I'll just show you again it's it's the it's uh, one two three four five six seven it's the eighth one down so I'm going to click that and it actually comes with a load of pre-made shapes. If I click on the floor plans um, any of these are already in the, the program and you can just drag them out. So for example rather than me having to draw my computer chair let's just drag in one of the pre-made ones and rotate it to be where I sit and again we can adjust that rotation angle by holding down a second finger um, if we wish. Um, we can also drag in, I've got a little sofa behind me here which I'll put in there, we've got a um, cupboard over here and we've got another little set of drawers over here. So I'm just going to drag them all in, and then I'm going to have a quick um, arrange of them. Oh, and I've got I put in a second door there without meaning to. Um, these are, although these are like pre-made shapes, they are completely um, editable. Soups. So although I'm going to put the, oops, that's the that's the wrong. So I can change the shape of it, I can edit bits off of it, I can delete bits off of it, I can change the colours on it. So for example my chest of drawers are actually kind of brown. Um, so by putting that in there like that, I can get something that more accurately represents what's in my room. And the, the same with the sofa, if I, if I wanted to uh, adjust the way the, the colours and that, or the shapes of that as well. Now, now for example, I'll show you the example of this with my with my little chest of drawers over here. Mine are a lot longer and thinner, so although this is a pre-made shape, I can completely resize that and put that into position like so. Uh, one last pre-made shape, because there was an alternative set of doors there, a double set of doors, which I'm going to pull in. Um, now these are transparent. Now one of the issues with being transparent is sometimes they're quite tricky to resize when they're on top of other objects. So the one of the easiest way to deal with that is to just pull it off somewhere completely different, resize it and get it in the right how you're looking before you um, then kind of pull it in. A um, few little finishing touches to our drawing here. We'll come out and we'll change the background colour for something a bit more kind of graph paper like. And we've got something that's starting to look like quite a reasonably professional little uh, uh, diagram of the floor. So there we go. There's our little um, quick example of a, a schematic style drawing using pre-made objects, uh, using a grid, adding and adding and editing various labels, dotted lines, a um, couple of gradients going on there as well. Hope you found this tutorial useful. If you did, then please give the video a like. And do subscribe for loads more tutorials and guides from the Adipose. Take care. See you soon. Bye-bye.